Just want to welcome the class of 2014-2015 season. First team gaffer, Ian Allison. First team coach and player, Mario Noto. And first team player and club captain, Callum Reynolds. Nice to see you all, guys. We're going to discuss the promotion season, 2014-2015. Go through sort of the fixtures. Navigate our way through good purple patches, signing so on and so forth, stories. Set questions with regards to well, when you felt certain things was changing in our favour. Um, I'm going to start with you, Gaffer. Pre-season. Yeah. What's your thoughts? I think like any any league when you're starting, Luke, your first target is probably make the playoffs. Um, the, the thing we'd had is we'd had a couple of seasons where we'd been up and down. So we'd had a relegation fight, then we got in amongst it, then we... At a, a mid-season where we finished mid-table, um, I felt we've gone into the season quite strong. Um, it, again, it comes down to was we going to score enough goals, and I think as you go through the season, it was goals that counted in the end. Defensively, we were very good, um, and the continuity we didn't lose many games, and we, we turned a lot of a lot of draws into wins um, by some of the signings we made as the season went on. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Gaffer. I have to say, I remember in pre-season we went and visited um, Hemel v Harrow. And yeah. done a report on Dean Brennan's. Yeah. Team. yeah. I, I've got to be honest, Maz, in terms of um, the squad, your thoughts, mate? Yeah, it was a bit of a real building job. I think, like, it was the start of, I remember the West End being finally, and it sort of kicked on a little bit from there where the club was starting to build and our journey was starting to, to, to kick on. And uh, we had Mark Jones left, Charlie O'Loughlin left. We knew Nunny was leaving at some part in the season to go travelling. So it was difficult to replace them. I think, obviously, you have to touch on the forwards that we brought in, especially Lee and Goal, um, was, was massive, massive for us. I remember we had Greg playing at left-back to start. start, And the pre-season was a hell of a pre-season. <laughs> it was. It was Brentford, Arsenal, Cambridge, um, Watford, Reading. I remember playing on a Friday night. And we always done that. And it was good in terms of the budget for us because it brought people to the ground um, but also I felt for, to be fair for the gaffer and the chairman it prepared us because we were we were really fit um, and we got our work done without too many sessions really and we played more games and obviously it helped the club with some revenue. Cal you know obviously being a player looking around you in pre-season you're very much looking at the management team saying well, where are we going with it what was your thoughts mate? Yeah, I just um, I can remember the runs from preseason, the, the twelve minute run. I can't. I, try, I don't know how many laps I used to do, but I used to do all right. We had a bleep test, and we used to do that running around the box, and uh, it was always hot. Obviously, preseason hot anyway. But even in the evenings, the Astro Turf just used to kick up, and then playing the games in preseason. We rarely play. I think we we maybe played a couple teams that weren't good. Was it? Did what for? The Dutchman what about six? Five yeah. six. Yeah. Was <laughs> I was chatting with Rusty about this the other day. Um did did Cam Cameron go and goal in that game? Or was that a previous year? No. Nah, previous. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was that was in a game app um The way it sent me at Scaffold, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, I just remember well, preseason is never easy, is it? But I felt in terms really... of in terms of the players, because obviously we had Leon think... on Junior Myers was at the back end of the season. The season yeah, before, mid, and... mid, think, midway think, through, wasn't it? I think the big one there Lee, was getting. I mean, the, the chairman worked an oracle to get to get Leango to where he got him. Um, in terms of Lee being released by Wickham, <clears throat> excuse me, and we. We knew how Lee and, and Junior had done the previous year on the spell we had. And our season started to fall away when we lost Junior, when Wickham pulled him back with about six games to go, I think it was yeah. now the previous year. We had Ricky Shakes coming back from from the, uh, yeah, the, the year out. It's like a, oh, like yeah. a, it's like a, a new signed. man. It was like a, a new massive signing, yeah. that was. Um, yeah. And as I say, the chairman got Lee Angle the move to Luton um, and got then the deal done to to take him on loan for the whole season and he secured that and I know on a number of occasions Luton wanted to take the boy back because he was just on fire for us 
Mm. And then bringing Junior in as his partner. And it's got nothing to do with Austin Lippman because Austin Lippman was a very good player. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was crafty. Austin was really good how he picked up little pockets. You forgot about David Moley, Gaffer. Well, David Moley came in, but he really wasn't what we were looking for in the end. And that was a disappointment because he's got a good pedigree. It was uh, good for me, though, because he used to give me lifts in from Luton. <laughs> <laughs> That's about Worked the best. Right few. We had Charlie Walker as well. <laughs> yeah, we brought in we, Charlie I Walker, think... brought in AJ. I think we've done... We've got to give ourselves a little bit of credit in terms of the way, I think, as a chairman and yourself and Luke and I, we work to try and get a different a player in every time and try and try and improve us. I think that was one thing that stood out for me across from the start of preseason. If you look at where we were with that, uh, that squad, I think Coxie, we signed right late on. Um, we negotiated with him and got him to sign and, and we had Scotty Thomas in there. And I think that was key of nailing down a few key players as, as we went through, because I think that kept us in good stead. And, and I think when you look back, Mario, you look at, you look at um, Shakespeare, you look at Matty Wichlow and you look at Monty, you know, there were, there were three wingers there that all come to the table with, with I mean, I, I set, still set the, the target now that, that if you're playing with wingers, they've got to be looking to score 10 to 15 goals. And if you look for yeah. the record, I mean, I think Monty was, was a lot more than that. Shakespeare, I think, weighed in with sort of eight or nine and, and Matty got the same. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, for the wingers to score over 20 odd goals between them it was massive. So you're saying competition in Gaffer? Because I look at Shakespeare, Monty, and Matty Witchlow. So when you're obviously sorting out a budget, and as you know that now with Enfield, yeah. you're looking to bring a group that you want good competition, but do you want to wreck it? Because I look at Callum Reynolds, Rusty, Ben Nunn, I know that he only played half the season, Graham Montgomery, Shakespeare from the year before, me, Maz, trying to think, Junior, Leanne Gall. Shows a bit of continuity as well, though, Gaffer. It does, and I think we knew what we had with with um, with Callum and, and Rusty. We did our homework the previous year. Remember, we spoke to three managers in the in the Ryman Premier, and we asked them who the best goalkeeper was in the league, and all three named Rusty as the goalkeeper that was the best. And I remember you doing the the first initial interview with him, um, and, and was quite surprised how actually small he was. In terms of a goalkeeper, uh, Maz, Maz was the initial contact, wasn't it? Maz had the initial contact. Was and then he yeah, I spoke to, to Camby about him. He was down at Camby, yeah. wasn't he? And yeah. then he's he comes to the site and so. I asked him if his brother was turning up. Hello, <laughs> 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 mate. Yeah, I'm James. I thought, yeah, he was. You know what, Rust? I love Rusty. Oh, he he looks no different now either. If you, no, come, if you come to meet you now, you'd think it's the same person. <laughs> eight stone wet, but he's um. <laughs> he was a Josh Hill as well, Gaffer. Josh Hill was a centre half. Yeah. Listen, listen I, I, I'll still go back now and I took Josh to St Albans when I first went there and I let him go halfway through the season and uh, I've always looked back and said that was a mistake on my behalf um, because if you look at his record, he got promotion with us, he's had playoffs with Chelmsford, playoffs with, um, with Dartford and playoffs with Welling. So, you know, the boy's done very, very well and as I say, that, for my part, well, it? A mistake when I, when I released him probably four years ago now. So we start the season at Farnborough at home. 2 0 win. Always good to start with a win, Gaffer. Well, it is because whatever you do, you don't you want to start the season and not lose any games to start with. The first thing is you don't get beat. Um, to start with a 2 0 win and, and, and to get a clean sheet is massive. Um, but I think if you go back to it, it was a tough game. They were a good side. They, you know, they'd got a good team together. I think we'd got in front and was riding the luck a little bit. And then I think, was it was it Monty got the second goal, was it? Or yeah. Is it, um, again, you know what Monty used to do? You know, he had a, a wand of a left foot. And uh, I felt we won it quite comfortably in the end, but it was a real good start to what we needed. And it puts on a platform that anyone needs at the start of the season is to go and get three points. Uh, and then you can climb the season as it goes along. But, you know, you mustn't lose that first game of the season. You touched on Monty, and I'm going to say, Callum, you must remember him at Hemel. The game, the second game in. Yeah, the uh, yeah, his goal was special. We won six goal. His <laughs> goal. It was two. Yeah, he banked. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he got two. What? What? It was, what, it was what? the it, it, it was the chip. Oh, I'm yeah. 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 I'm yeah. The, the chip was the special one. Yeah. The chip's outstanding. But then again, you say how? No disrespect to Monty, you shouldn't be shooting from there. Yeah. yeah and he goes and bends it far post into the stanch. Yeah. And a dink. It was yeah, it was special. I remember they had they had a they had a, they had a striker up top, quite an experienced one, Hemel. Um, and I remember, I just remember like we battered him. It was it was a massive result, obviously early in the season as well. 
Um, I remember him saying towards the end of the game, he was like, "You are going to win the league. And that was like the second game of the season. Obviously, I can't remember who it was exactly, but obviously he was experienced. He'd played at a decent level and yeah. to know what we were about. So to hear that obviously was was a good thing. Um, and to start with two clean sheets is obviously a good thing. Like you said, we had we had a pretty decent defensive record anyway, like before. Um, and then obviously as the season went on, there was games where we felt if we didn't concede, you know, when you get on that momentum and that run, you just know if you don't concede, you're gonna you're gonna win. Not even get a, not even a draw. Like there's games where you think you're gonna win. Um, but yeah, like you said, the, the goals that we had coming from everywhere, um, but important ones as well. I always remember Shakespeare. He used to, he didn't really get consolation goals. They were always sort of key goals at key times in like probably big games. Yeah, he come in, Cal. You're dead right. He come in towards the end of the season with some big me thinking back some big goals. But Monty for the first, he just it was just special goal after special goal. I remember yeah. the club doing a little sort of video of him uh, Monty Saurus and every goal was literally a goal of the season it yeah, was literally, a joke like the he, volley he didn't, he didn't score bad goals did, uh, to be fair even the first game was farm bro that was a world goal wasn't it it was a worldie it was a worldie, yeah. it was a worldie. Yeah. Yeah. It from miles out but yeah it started you raining just, when it started raining he stopped hitting worldie <laughs> <laughs> just changing the subject as well if you go back to the Carlisle game when it was nil-nil he's hit a weldy with his right foot I think from about 30 yeah. Yeah, over his shoulder. Oh, Nani's on his shoulders. Absolutely yeah. welded it to keep them keep them in the game at that stage. Yeah, Nani's done yeah. that on the shoulders. Well, he got it? the one. At, he got the one at Basingstoke from wide. Yeah. He got the, that was a year uh, before, wasn't Wally. it? Yeah, yeah a year before. Yeah. Like he he scored so many great goals. He did. He was a scorer of great goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graham didn't really score bad ones, did he? No, he didn't. Graham. <laughs> <laughs> As we then go two losses, well, a loss and a draw. Staines and Bromley. Yeah, after the Staines game, I, I remember, it was like a nothing game. And we kind of kind of conceded and then we didn't really... And it kind of, I think, the early start where we win two and then we lose two. And I said, like, throughout the season, I, if you look at the record, our consistency was good. Um, we didn't concede many and we didn't... Um, and we scored quite a few. But it was kind of like a bit of a reality check that we probably which generally happens when you win two games and everyone starts thinking about... 6-0 as well, isn't it? I've got to be honest. Yeah. Do you get complacent, Gaffer, do you reckon? We, a little bit I complacent. actually thought we played really well at Staines. This is yeah. a game that sticks out. I think I think there was some some individual areas and I think it's probably the first time where we realised Greg might not be a left-back. They exposed us down that side. Um, and if you remember, we, we, was, we, we played ever so well to start with and they got a ball down the right-hand side and Josh was come across and just knocked it against the fence, where he should put it out of the ground. He just knocked it against the fence, picked it up quickly, took a quick throw on, yeah. and got it scored against us. And little things like that that come back and bit us on the bum in, in them games, because if we go and do the job properly, and like we did, and we'll get to that stage probably in the last 10 games, where we learnt how to win and, and, and to make sure we didn't lose many games, that's at that stage of the season. If we'd have done that there, we put the ball out of the ground, we'd get our shape back. We, You'd we, say that with, that with a little bit of naivety, Gaffer? Like I would have we said were... it naive, yeah, from Josh and from Greg, because neither of them got back into their, their starting positions. Um, because, as I say, if he puts the ball out the ground, we've got to wait for a new ball to come back on. We can get all back in our shape and, uh, you know, we can go and make sure they don't score. And I think that gives them a little bit of a heads up. I remember in the second half, we battered for long periods, but we just couldn't score that goal. Yeah. But, again, they got in front and, uh, you know, they kept us at play. But I still felt that we actually played quite well that game. But then we went to Bromley and drew one all, or played Bromley at home and drew one all. So we picked up one point from two. The next five games, we won four and lost one. Bath yeah. was the one we lost. We lost at home to Bath 2 1. We beat Sutton away 3 1. 1 0 away at Gosport. 5 2 away at Eastbourne. And then it was 4 0 at home against Chelmer. I think going back to the Sutton game, Lee, I think that's when, uh, Luke, I think that's when we realised we weren't bad. We, we'd gone there and I think it was Shakesy, Scotty Thomas and and Sam Cox. And I think it was to start with Monty and then Matty Wichlow came on and we absolutely got about their midfield, unbelievable. Yeah. And that's when we had, um, with Coxie was just smashing people and then we really, pace going forward made us realise that we, we weren't a bad side. We'd actually gone to a good side in Sutton and, and made them look quite poor. In that last 10 minutes, we could have got four or five. Did, did, did Lee, said, 
Go on, Cal. Do I remember Lee scoring in that game? Yeah, late on. Yeah, yeah. that's when Austin, I thought, yeah, same I think thing. Austin like, Lippman came on as well and got one, didn't he? Yeah, going to, yeah, going to a place like Sutton was never easy. I don't think I'd won there before. And to go there and win and sort of the way that we did, again, it's just another, just little things that build your confidence going forward um, in the season. Because as early as that, Cal, because obviously you said the second game in against Hemel, I'm going to say it's the Blonde boy up top. Big Blonde boy, boy for Hemel. It must have said it. Nah. Well, Steve Crawley, was it? Sorry? No, it wouldn't have been. Nah. Nah. The, the boy that was at Dagenham, played centre half, centre forward. Big geezer. Yes, Man. I know what you mean. He went to Bath as well. Went to Bath, yeah. yeah. So even after he said that 6 0, Cal, you're saying, you're saying for you, you're going, you're saying in terms of that was early, someone said you're going to win the league. Then after Sutton, we're only five games in. The confidence yeah, is yeah, that not, high. Not getting, yeah, not getting, ahead, not getting ahead of myself. But in terms of, I think, a mentality of obviously the years before playing and kind of just, it's nothing worse than when you play a season and you just, you got nothing to play for the last sort of six, six weeks. And uh, yeah, to hear, to hear that and to experience those things. Yeah, it was early in the season, but for me, a mentality to think, this is not just going to be another season. Do you know what I mean? Make something happen. Um, because you hear it, you hear it from everyone, and they tell you all the time that football goes so quickly. That you've got to make the most of make the most of your time when you're playing. And like I said, there's nothing worse than just playing a season out with nothing to play for. Like even even the first year in the national league, it went down to the last day, but we were still we we needed to win in, in the season. Yeah, so yeah. we. we there's something to fight and to play for. purpose, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, even that early, I think, well, personally, um, it would have been my third third year, third season. Um, but, yeah, like, even when you say about Greg starting at left-back, it's, uh, I thought it was something that it wasn't going to be. It wasn't going to be that for the rest of the season. You know what I mean? And if we could, if we could get through these games and get some results with with that as well, um, then that, that's only kind of positive to build on. Do you remember who we went to, Maz, after them four wins and that one loss? Um, so off the to top, Do you remember who we went? We went away from home twice. Did we? Did we lose both? Was it Bayes and Lost Stoke? Lost both. Bayes and Stoke and haven't. Both who were finished where in the league in the playoffs, didn't uh, they? Yeah, in the playoffs, just behind. So us, two it? big games where you're not being funny. <clears throat> you want to go and win them games, don't you? I can imagine they would have been up there with us. So to go away from home, then Cal, to lose two one to two one on the bounce. If you remember though, Luke, Basingstoke, we, we we played ever so well again. Yeah, and, I thought and we were awesome. We uh, we had a chance in the ninety first minute, it felt, and that fell to David Molly. Hey, Molly, and he smashed he it. And the keepers made an absolute weldy. He was on loan from Reading, I think. Yeah, yeah. no, you know it was. It's uh, it was oh, whose brother was it? I think it was Simon Moore's brother. Yeah, I think you're right. And he, they, I remember playing with Simon Moore before at Basingstoke on loan, and yeah. I used to cane him, and now he's in the Prem. But I just remember his brother, and I think I spoke to, I might message him after the game, or I spoke to his brother after the game, and I was like, you're way better than your brother used to be. But, but yeah, yeah, they literally made the save, and then they transferred it straight in behind down the other end. Back, yeah. And the fellas just gone through and scored. Flood, wasn't yeah. it, I think? Yeah, yeah. Right. blood we're just right. went through and scored, and you think, how the hell have we come away but from even it? Then we brought in Jordan Brown at left back <clears> at that <throat> time, yeah. and I thought, like, uh, yeah. And then you, like you said, Luke, we go to Basingstoke and Haven, who you think are going to be up there, and we go and get beat two one two one. Like it's, it just shows again, like we said at the beginning, we started well, and then I think don't think our consistency came until a few games in. Uh, Barry, probably two months into the season where we kind of knew what we were about. We had a structure, we were hard to beat and then we had the firepower up top that we'll go on to speak about. Well, I've, I've, go on, Gaffer. As I said, you know, when you look at, you know, I'm just going through the games now in terms of where I am, but September was a hard month because you've got the FA Cup in that as well, remember? Remember? We, yeah. Where was it? Who do we go? Who do we play in the FA Cup? Fro- Frome, wasn't it? We had Frome, Frome yeah. away. 
and that was tough. We drew one all there, didn't we? And yeah. Could have got beat. We, 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 we won one nil on the replay, but they actually bet my much better in the replay. But it was a I really good night. Nice. Words down there, Gaffer, in the changing room. Well, I think it was, you know, I ain't having like, that, Maz. I ain't having it. He's <laughs> calm, cool, and collective. I, <laughs> I think sometimes, Maz, is, is when you've got a team like we had, when you set standards, you, you have to keep your standards. And, and I think they were the exact words you used. Were they? Well, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I, I find it really difficult at this level in terms of where people have these ups and downs on a weekly basis. And it's all about your, your mentality and how you set your standards from the start. And you do that. And I think that's what I'm saying. If you look at our record at, at spells where we go towards the end of it, standards were set. And everybody, I didn't have to do a team talk. Luke didn't have to do a team talk. You didn't have to do a team talk. Every player knew what they was expected of them. And they went out and did their job. Beginning of the season, you're playing from on a pitch that goes from right to left from about 10 yards up to 10 yards down. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't start properly. We didn't start right. We were lucky. And in the yeah. FA Cup, you know, we want to make some money. And that extra money we made that year, is that, is that the reason why we got promotion? Because they allowed the chairman to put some more money back into the club. So go and get the players that we needed to go and get. I I've got a funny story. We went to Woking, I think, in the next one. Did we get drawn against Woking away? No, I think it was um, East Preston, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but then did did we get to Woking? They went to Woking. I think for me, when when Cal says that Hem all 6 0, then Sutton away, I think for me, we showed we were a proper team when we played Woking away. Yeah, that was me. Because they were what? Fourth, fifth at the time in the National League. They had the likes of Kevin Betsy, Joe Quigley, Kieran Murta, Mark Ricketts. They had, Alan, they had a proper, proper Joe McKerney centre half, proper, proper team, and we was agreed we lost two one. Yeah, and then literally, and we and what well, we got a goal disallowed. David again, David Molly scored, yeah. and it was a goal oh, disallowed. Yeah. And I remember yeah. funny story with that where I think we've all celebrated, and Monty is gone and smashed his head <laughs> yeah. against, yeah, yeah, yeah. against, <laughs> against the dugout. And <laughs> I turned around, and he's on the floor. I'm thinking, what's going on? And then. We had to get Megan a physio to have a look at him because he'd, he'd knocked himself out and cut his head <laughs> on the duck out. Oh, um, so, to great. put a little bit of a, a sweeter note on that. But, yeah, we, we ran them really close and I agree with Luke. Like We but showed I, out how I, much I, of a team we were. What I think you've done, though, is you've just skipped probably what was... No, no, Gaffer, yeah. No, we're going back. We're going back. We're going back. We're going back. <laughs> you've got to we go had... back to Monday, the 6th of October. We had yeah. an absolute purple patch at home to St. Albans was the start. Yeah. We had a period that I've got here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins and one draw. And what did we do on that day? Go on, we Gaffer. finally got it through and over the line and signed Junior Moraes. Yeah, Moraes. Yes, yeah. and he scored the goal. And yeah. he came on. Maidenhead. And that one week was that, and the following, I think, was made in Ed, and he scored yeah. two worldies. And it just sort of yeah. the whole crowd to give the crowd a lift. I remember when Junior came on against St. Albans, the whole crowd were just, just buzzing, yeah. everybody was buzzing off his signing. Yeah, yeah, well, he was well, massive. I, I think Timon and Pumba, in it, them two, Leo yeah. and Junior Marias. He was unplayable, look. both of them were unplayable at that level at that time. I don't think there was anything in the league that could handle them. No. Nah. I still look at Lee Angle now and I still think a lot of these managers wouldn't do any arm to ring Luke yourself or me up and say, how did you play Lee Angle? Because I think everyone plays him as a target man and he's not a target. He actually drifts in the holes. Junior would do the running in behind or be a target man and set things up and then Lee would come from deep and then when he got going, he was blistery quick. I remember his performance at Stevenage in the Arts County Cup. Yeah. They they sent on two, didn't they? They sent on two to do him. Yeah. 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 yeah, but he used to come in that little left-hand channel and he used to slow you down, slow you down, slow you down, shift through the gears. Yeah, He was outstanding. Not one think... person's rang me, probably Luke's exactly the same, and yourself, Mary, and said, you know, how does Lee Angol play? Because he's never been the same player since. He's never scored the amount of goals that he scored playing for us. But I still think people think because he's six foot three, six foot four, he's a target man, and he's not a target man. No. He's got loads more ability than that gaffer. Yeah. And I think him and Junior, you know when, Cal, I can imagine you at Barnet now, you and Josh Hill previously... You build relationships. Maz, me and you sent me field in the Ryman year. Then you went up first year conference south. I, you got your back. I got my back. Them two yeah. working together up top. When you said, Cal, we had the best defensive record, I honestly believe we could concede a goal and still not fear winning twos and threes. Again, that's another thing. I think, uh, like I said, if we didn't concede, I think we'd win. But then also, if we did concede, I wouldn't panic 
because I thought we still got goals in us. And like you said, them two together, they were mates off the pitch and that chemistry on the pitch was special. And like, yeah, you said, I just remember I used to get it maybe sort of somewhere near the halfway line. Um, I'd have it on my right foot and Junior would just make the perfect run. He'd run across the line and bend his run and I could just leave it over the centre half for him. Mm. Or I could smash it into Lee's feet and he can kind of deal with it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like other players and players that we'd have played with before, you kind of, you're not going to fire it. Well, I'm probably not, probably not going to fire it into him because I know they're not going to hold it up. Do you know what I mean? So it gives that option to hurt teams. Um, and like, like I said, if you, when you've got that option of playing one to feet and one in behind, it's so hard, they're so hard to play against. And that's without their pace and strength. Like, between Yeah, them. they had a bit of magic. They had a bit of everything. They were, they were good front two weren't they they yeah. they, they complemented each other they could go in a bit they were yeah, great front two yeah. I remember going back do you remember we first brought them in Gaffar and, and we played a... Concord away oh. and we beat them 4-0 and literally unfortunately certain centre half king at the time he could not deal with Lee and Lee just kept yeah. running him and running him and running him and they could have they could have called six or seven that day Gaffer, tell us the story though yeah, just... tell us the story why why because you were sent to get one you went to watch I went on right I went and watched Junior Marais playing for Wickham against Beaconsfield. Oh, was it Beacon? Beaconsfield? Yeah, was it, did you say? Burnham, I thought it was. No, Beaconsfield. And I got there and they said that Junior, he played left wing. And I watched the game. And who, sorry, who's the manager at Wickham? What's his name? Um, Angler. Yeah, he, um, he was playing. And they had a lad up front who I thought, God, this kid's different class. And he was, he was going in, he was late, he was leaving his foot in, he was running in behind. And uh, I come away from there and I rang Luke. I said, Luke, you've got to go and get the other lad, Lee Angle. I said, I think he's better than Junior in the race. So in the morning, I said, Luke, give him a ring. He rang him up. He went, Gaffer, he said, what? He said, we can take the both for the same price as we're going to play in the race, as long as we take a pair of them. Yeah. And we got both players for the same price. So it was um, a fantastic deal from obviously Luke's point of view, what he did. Um, but again, it helped us out. And the two of them came in and they turned our season around that year. Yeah. Again, you know, Junior got called, pulled back and he was then part of the first team. And then he got obviously retained and then uh, Lee got released. As I said, you know, it's the same old story. But, you know, we know what happened with Lee in the end. But Junior, we had to wait till October before we could get him. And then uh, we got them both on permanent deals. Yeah. In great. that in that nine, nine match game, we scored 21 goals, four clean sheets. And I think we conceded one, two, three, four, five. It's outstanding. To go off the back of Bates and Stoke Haven, to go to play St. Albans at home, Hayes away, Wollstone at home, Maidenhead at home, Concord away, Gosport at home, Weston at home, Hayes at home, and Staines at home was outstanding. There was a thing Charlie sent me through yesterday, and it's uh, where we was. We were actually top of the table for a long period. Mm. A long period. I think it was something like 12 weeks at one stage. Yeah. It was 24 matches out of 40 gaffer. It was the top of the table. 60% of the yeah. season, we were top. Yeah. yeah, I remember being, I remember being top for most of the for most of the season, and it was, I loved it. It was like a good pressure. I used, I used to hate it when we come off the top. I found it harder trying to get back to the top. I don't know. I don't know who, whether that's a normal thing or not. But the chase, the pressure of chasing, and you have to. Whereas when you're ahead and that. I don't know, I used to love it. I used to thrive with being, being at the top and wanted to stay there as well. But, Cal, didn't you think that we, we were on that roll? Was just, it didn't matter. We just win the next game and then the next game because we had that balance of defensively we were sound, but yeah. then also we had the magic in and around it to, uh, to go and score. Who are you doing a deal with, Gaffer? <laughs> Jim was rang me. That's what you want. Don't tell him. Don't <laughs> tell him. Don't tell him. Hang up. I'll speak to you later. Go, go. But yeah, that uh, yeah that period was just yeah we was just just steam training and like you said we had we had that combination of sometimes sometimes not playing great although we did we did what I can remember we played well more times than but still picking up them results and uh, yeah it just felt like you know when you go on and runs you just know when you step on the pitch that the boys are going to do the job and more often they're not going to get the result to get the win. I think I think that again off the pitch is the three of us had the had the relationship where we knew what every, everybody else's. Add a fourth, Gaffer. Add a fourth. Sorry, mate. 
add a fourth to us. So me, you, Maz, and I thought there was a massive, massive part. James Courtney. Yes, yeah, and I, I even think oh, you've got to take Megan into it though, Luke, in terms uh, of the Megan, side well, of, of it course. because she was very, very good. I remember when Shakespeare did her. He's, he's Achilles going back probably 15 months before that was she got that spot on that night she knew exactly what was wrong with him um, she diagnosed that well and I think as a team we uh, we worked really well and I think everybody knew their jobs that was it and everybody understood each other um, you know we didn't just go on a whim we you know behind the scenes because obviously I was working full time you know you guys spent a lot of time in, in doing the homework on the on the teams who we was playing We'd sit and discuss it and then try and put a plan in place. And, uh, you know, from that side of it, we knew what we had. That's what I said to you before. Once the players bought into what we was trying to do, and you're right, Callum, you know, when you're in a relegation battle, there's pressure. When, you, when you're top of the league, there is pressure, mate. It's, it's a nice pressure to have. Yeah, I, um, I remember Sheik saying, it was his first session, marquee signing, wasn't it? On a two-year deal. First, it wasn't even, the war, it was in the little run, wasn't it? The leap test or whatever we did. Well, sound like he kicked a, he sounded like he kicked a cone. He went, yeah, and we weren't even running fast. Yeah. And, uh, I, I just remember your faces thinking the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. No, but to be fair, that season, <laughs> that season, our injury record was superb, along with our disciplinary record. I think Lee Angle got sent off, Nunny got sent off, and then I can't really remember anyone else. Yeah, the, I can't uh, remember anyone else. Lee got sent off two bookings. Uh, I can't remember the game. I remember him getting sent off and then thinking, uh-oh. Um, and then after Nunny got sent off when he first came back, I know we'll get on to him coming back. But yeah, our, our disciplinary record, and I think that's something that yourself, Gaffer, and the chairman, I think we had a, quite a strict policy in terms of dissent and stuff like that. And yeah, everyone can, kind of bought into it. To get it, it sent off, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's, it worked, though, Cal. It no, worked. No, true, but it's, it does because it... Uh... All them one percent yeah, matters. A massive part of it because you're not only you're not only letting like well you're letting yourself down or whatever, but you do you let the team down and the boys because if it's cost you a result when you're getting sent off as well and it's uh... yeah and look you look at us we didn't have the biggest squad did we Gaffo it no. was everyone everyone needed to be there and be doing their job and we needed everyone if we ended up losing two or three to suspensions and that I think that would have that would have changed the course of events. Key yeah. players as well. I've got to be honest. The key players because. We had good strength wide, good strength up top. Centre halves didn't have much strength. Not yeah. being, no, no, not not in the two not, we did. Not in Josh, terms of size. Josh, Alan Reynolds. Yeah. Was very strong. Very we very just, strong. We wasn't a big side, was we? When you look no. at the goalie's not the biggest in the world, was he? Yeah, I mean, two centre um, midfielders. But, Scotty yeah. and, and yeah. Scotty Coxie. and Scotty. They made up. What they lacked in height, they made up. Yeah, they fight. made up in grit and determination and all that Thomas, side of it. Scott was, was an unbelievable signing gaffer. Yeah. Where did he get him from? We kind of watched him, didn't we, against St. Albans, funny yeah. enough. They got, they Cheshire. got beat. Cheshire, they got beat yeah. And we each stuck out by a sore thumb, Scotty. Yeah. yeah. That's the, you could, the, could, I'm you working with him now, and he's, he's unbelievable still. Which At that job, at that sitting job, to read and break up the play and then to distribute, he's, he's, a, he's as good as anyone at that level. Mm. He was awesome, mate. And how good was he as a bloke? How oh, mate, top guy. Top we guy. Great game. beard. Yeah. Great beard. We'd great finish hair, games and how hand. many would be in the bar after? Yeah. We'd have double figures. Double yeah. figures. One minute. Go downstairs, yeah. you. <laughs> Go downstairs. Um, we then, after that spell, Gaffer, we lost one, two, three in our in our next five. We were to Eastbourne in the Christmas, sort of the Christmas period. Lose at Eastbourne 4 1. That was. What? That was my time to have choice words. I remember that. That was probably one of my first sort of coach managerial things. I think you didn't say anything, Gaffer. We were we were bad. We were bad that day. And uh, I think you kind of looked at me and then I just went into one out of nowhere. And I remember you, Luke, coming up to me after and said, mate, you got it spot on. And I was like, wow, that was the first time I really had to step up and do that in front of all the players and that. But we just didn't have anything. And I remember talking about that lack of incon uh, consistency because we'd done so well and then literally kind of thrown it away by going and losing and putting in a performance like that. I think it was just, just before that, though, what, what we did, there was a spare weekend, remember? And we played Staines and beat them 3-0. And it was a game yeah. we put in at the last minute. And Staines were struggling that season towards that stage. And that gave us a bit of confidence. And then when we went there and got absolutely battered by Eastbourne, 
Um, one thing with it though, Matt, I always feel a different voice now is, then helps in terms of if, the, if they're going to get the same old, same old, the, the players, when you get beat, sometimes... Yeah, you know that now. Cal, you go into coaching and managerial. We've, we've one million percent gaffer. Yeah, you, most you definitely. Was, Mazza, you were massive to that group because you was like, arm round. The minute you shout, people listen, I think, because they'll go... Yeah, because you don't normally do it. Yeah. And you know, as Cal, as a player, you become immune to that. If you've got the same voice hammering you the whole time, it yeah. doesn't work. It doesn't have an effect. And I think everyone's... Like obviously, obviously, being a captain and kind of knowing how to speak to people in different ways, um, and you get different reactions from different people. Sometimes you need to give someone a kick up the ass. Other people an arm around them because you know, let's say Monty. If you start battering Monty, he's just gonna his head's gonna drop into his shoulders. You ain't gonna get stuff out of him. Whereas someone like I don't know Coxie, if he's not on it that day and that, and you start going at him, and you can see him just getting riled up, and you need sometimes you need that reaction from the players. Gaffer, uh, that's what I think for me, you was awesome. I think your man management was outstanding. You had the, you had what's that, mate? It's nice of you to say that. Gaffer, honestly, for me, out outstanding. Outstanding. Because I thought you knew I thought you knew them individually. And I knew I, like Cal said, you was very good with Monty. You was very good to Monty. You could get after Cal to an extent, you get after Coxie. Get after me and Maz, for sure. Mm. I thought you were cute with Leangol, cute with Marias. I thought your man management was outstanding. Outstanding. As I, said, as I said before, it goes back to a lot of trust, though, Luke. And as I said, you're, you know, we'd always have a discussion. Me and you and Matt, we'd talk every single minute of the day. First thing in the morning, tea time, whatever we do, we talk all the time. So trust. I think it's trust that comes into it. I'm so sorry. He's hit up here and he's not I saying think, um, <laughs> I think the word trust, as I said to you, is massive in terms of, you know, we had a, we had a, we had a good relationship with the chairman. He, you know, he trusted what we were doing. You, I could trust you guys. But I know when we put the training sessions on, I knew you were going to work them boys. There was no easy sessions where them boys were concerned. And we had to make sure that, you know, these boys were fit. We had to make sure they were organised. And uh, it, was, it was easy from that side just to manage the squad from that side. It might be easier for myself. Yeah, I second that as well. Like, obviously, looking back at reflection, it being a bit, bit older, more experienced now. Um, and there'd be times, Gaffer, where you'd speak to me and just be, just be well, harsh but honest. But it's what I needed to kind of hear at the time because sometimes I'd get too comfortable, whether it was in training or whatever. Um, and that was another thing. Training, training was quality. Every session was good. There was, I'd never walk away. I used to love training. I love training anyway. I, I just I love play football, but. I knew we'd come training and it would be prepared. Do you know what I mean? We won't turn up and, oh, what is it tonight? And just throw a few cones out. Like, we were prepared on a Tuesday. was a good, if we didn't have midweek game, or sorry, on a Monday night when we trained, it was a good blow. And then Thursday would be short and sharp, a bit of preparation for the Saturday, which I don't think, to be honest, at that level, at that time, not, not really many other teams, if any at all, would have had that kind of preparation um, going into a game. Uh, especially with with it being sort of part time, um, some labs probably thought just need to get some get some football in their legs and, that and get their lungs working ready for the weekend. But we used to go in with a bit of a plan as well, which obviously now the way football's changed and moved on, it's a massive part of it, and it gives you it gives you confidence as a player to know that you you guys have done your job, set us up as best as you can for us to win. Do you know what I mean? Giving us the tools to go and get. Or to go and be successful, which obviously proved that season. I think you're spot on, mate. I have to say, I thought the relationship between the four of us, five of us, including Megan and the chairman, I have to say, Gaffer, because I thought you and him had a good relationship. I thought that the trust is a massive word. Trust was a massive word. To allow me and Maz to deliver them sessions off the back of what you wanted done. I'd just like to interrupt you there, though, Luke, is, is, and you've got to take full credit for yourself because your ages at the time, I think Mario was 30, 31, and he was 29. And you've got to take full credit for the responsibility that you took in terms of taking those sessions and getting the players, because there was one or two that was as experienced as what you was, is getting them to believe in what you was doing and, and them getting your trust as well, because... You know, it's not easy for people like yourselves when you're sitting out in this game, especially now. It's difficult, um, but you managed to get their trust. You got their belief, 
I certainly had your your trust and belief, and uh, I know the chairman had your trust and belief, and it's massive from that side of it, and that goes a long way to to building a squad and building a team. Hundred percent, hundred percent. In that, in them two two games we won. Does anyone remember them? There was Boxing Day and New Year's Day. We had New Year's Day, Stortford. I, I remember that clear as day because we were yeah. unbelievable, and Lee was Lee Angle was a joke that day. He the was, pitch was horrendous. Yeah. Pissing down the rain. It was absolutely, yeah, we, we abused them. Abused yeah. them all. But then going before that, I remember we signed, after them three defeats when we talked about the Eastbourne, we signed AJ. Uh, we brought AJ in. But then we went to Bath. I remember because we didn't score. I remember making a few notes thinking about it. We didn't score. That was the first time we didn't score in 23 games. We, we lost him, though, didn't we? Did we start him that day? Yeah, I think so. And he was a little bit... We, we played him wide, didn't we? Yeah, he started, really well. He started yeah. really well for 20 minutes, didn't he? And then I he think. blew up. He, did, he just didn't have enough football in his legs. He was, he was tired and we took him off. But I remember, I remember us... We, we didn't score in that it, for 23 games. And I remember reading that thinking, geez, is that correct? Because that that's, that's a long time for us not to go score, like for a team not to score. It's not the day I fell out with him, Luke. Is it before the 5-0 victory? I'm going to it say might it. Have been. You well, are? I'm saying it is. It is the day, is it? Oh, and well, for me, yeah. that, from a management point of view, that yeah. was a catalyst because he had to walk back into that group, mm. pick up his wash bag underneath his peg and walk out. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that, actually. And it was, for me, it was, everyone was like... What's going on here? Oh, yeah. But I mm. thought, again, I go on... Them little moments in, in managerial things, Gaffer, are massive. But I think that's your experience and ingenuity. You knew Gaffer how to how to deal with that. And... Well, I, I, I didn't do I didn't do it on the spur of the moment. I spoke no, to no. Him first, called Luke out and said, you know, this is what I want to do, and he was 100 percent behind me. And then that's what I said. You know, he doesn't. You know, he, he didn't accept being on the bench. Um, I, I didn't think he was part of what we was trying to do, of where we was trying to go. And the best thing for me was for him to leave the change room, and that's what I asked him to do. And then we, you know, we went and won five nil. So. It's, uh, oh, that plays a part for me, Gaffer. I think that yeah. plays a part. Massive part. We then go Eastbourne at home. Lose 3-1. Then again... Ebbsfleet, Ebbs innit? Sorry. Ebbs Sorry, Ebbsfleet. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Not Eastbourne. Ebbsfleet. Apologies. 3-1 loss. And then I the big one. that one. Did we go one what? Did we go? Did we? Did, did we go ahead in that game? They had Brownie as a manager, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we actually played yes. quite well, but I think they were on the day. They scored experience. late on. They scored yeah. late on, too late on. Yeah. And the result flattered them a little bit. But yeah, we didn't we didn't play badly. And then we went to Boreham Wood, well, uh, to St. Albans, sorry, and, and won 2 0. I remember we scored after about 30 seconds, an own goal, I think. Yeah. But they actually played really well and they were they were near the bottom, weren't they? Yeah. And they put it on us, I think. On. Yeah. They Junior put it on us. Late on. Just to go back, just one second about that ebb and flow. I remember when we beat we beat Stortford five nil. Bromley lost to Concord two one, and we thought. And I remember thinking, here we go. This is going to kickstart. And you talk about them catalysts, Luke, and stuff like that. But then we go and lose to Ebbsfleet. But then we go and beat St Albans. So it was that constant ebb and flow of that journey. Even though we had consistency in terms of we didn't score <coughs> many games, we won games or lost games. It was probably better, and we stayed at the top. But it was that. Come on, lads, we've got to be consistent and put back to back wins. And I think later on, um, we see that we do that and, and get to where we got to. Well, we then go Basingstoke and we lose twice in one season. Yeah. If, 4 0. Team now, we lost 4 zip, Pam. Yeah, yeah, at home. At but home. we had a funny January. That Look at the results. We had a funny January where like, we didn't play well, but some sort of results kind of went our way. It was because it kept, kept us up there. I think in other seasons, if you look going forward, if you, if we didn't do that, we could have dropped right out of it, losing them games there and teams sort of capitalising on it. We could have dropped out of that sort of top five, but we never did. I think going back to the Basingstoke game, I think that's the first time they really sort of exposed us over the top, with balls yeah. over the top. And, and I'm not sure. I know Flood was one of them and there was somebody else and they uh, called us... Well, he, I think half time Manny Williams. Time. It weren't Manny Williams, was it? It might have been, but I think it was one of them games where we went. Let's just sort of not get beat five or six here. Yeah, we were already three 0 down very quickly. I'm sure it was three 0 at half time, and it was just about making sure we didn't lose too much confidence. 
in uh, in getting a hammer in. And, uh, but they, they did a job on us that day, and you got to say well done to them. You know, that was the turn of the year. By that time, did we have Ben Hurd in the building? No. Ben no Martin. I think we brought in Ben Martin in. Ben Martin for St Albans. I remember he played the St Albans. Did he play the St Albans game? Yeah. The way. The two yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so I remember him coming in then. And that was, uh, for me, I thought this is great because at that point in my career, I hadn't really played with a more experienced centre half. I know I, I was relatively young as a centre half, and but I'd played, I played with Charlie, Charlie O'Loughlin before, who he was great. Obviously, he's a big character in that. Um, more kind of, I guess, old school, if you like, the way he was and the way he played football, which was good, but he wasn't much of a... He was more of a kind of, like, encourager and get the boys going. He didn't really... Never would... I'd have to tell him kind of what to do football-wise. So I thought, with Ben coming in the building, I thought, OK, this is... One, it's good because a bit of competition keeps the boys on their toes. And knowing that he'd been promoted from this league before and he, had, like, he was a decent player in the non-league... Um, and just a bit of experience to lean on, not even necessarily to talk to, but a few times he spoke to me and had some good conversations, but just to kind of watch and observe how he played, because he wasn't, he wasn't the most professional off the pitch, um, but he didn't let you down on the pitch either. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, I think that, that was, although he didn't play a lot, it was good. Not only for myself, but I think it made Josh sort of realise that he can't. Spot on. The introduction of Ben Martin made Josh Hill come to the party. Yeah, because it's Josh. Like, I love Josh and he's my mate still now. Um, but I think he needed to learn. He needs to, he needs to toughen up a bit. Um, yeah, there's competitions to places. We spoke about that before, yeah. didn't we, pal? Competitions to places. But also, you can't give up the wealth of experience he'd had. He'd been yeah. in promotion teams. He'd he'd worked hard. He'd know how to manage games. And I think that was a real key part of yeah. him coming in. And credit to, to Gaffer in terms of getting it done and making sure he came in. Because I think he was invaluable in terms of the experience in and around. Having little conversations with people. And I think now, me going into management, Luke, you're obviously in management. Gaffer, you've been in it for a long time. The, the value you give to those players who manage the gesture room and kind of release it without you doing anything is, is key. He was a cheerleader. I'm not being yeah. funny. He only played 11 games that season in probably about 20-odd or 22. He never, ever, for me, give you a problem, Gaffer, give us a problem, as as a management team. No. He was always getting around the players. Always yeah. getting around the players. Always Even happy to have a beer yeah. after as well with the lads. Yeah. 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 One of those ones lads. where you have... Complete opposite to what AJ was. What did wasn't starting, kicked up a fuss and went out the door. Whereas Ben would have been on the bench even if he wasn't. Even around the place, behind the scenes where you boys don't hear and when players talking and that, he never would bring. It would never bring a, a, a toxic energy. Of it was always all right, but make sure you get the job done. Or like you said, them little things maybe in the warm up to me and Josh to say about how the game is going or whatever or at half time. But yeah, it was massive, massive experience. And then at that time, we brought in Ben Hurd as well. I think that's when he it, came in after. We hadn't brought Ben in. I've, I've no, after ben. that, though, Gaffer. I think we brought in, I remember, is it Terrell Rodney Miller coming in? Or Miller Rodney came in? Yeah, we kind of Brent shuffled the pack a little bit. I think we went, a, and we went to Farnborough, Gaffer. And he His played. first game would have been Farnborough, too. Yeah. Uh, Farnborough away. All of that. That's after we've got, I mean, I don't know if you're going to bring it up, Luke, was the, was the Whitehawk game? Yeah, go on. I know yeah. what you're going to say. We went, we went to Whitehawk after, obviously, a couple of poor runs, and we got absolutely battered by Felt. Whitehawk. We got three nil. Yeah. three nil could have been six or seven, couldn't it? I mean, Rusty kept yeah. in the game. He made save after save after save. We were really poor, and I think that's when we had the discussion Sunday morning. And I remember the chairman was coming back from Cornwall, and, and, he, and he called me, and he said, you know, what do you feel? And I said, well, we, we've got to richly scrape it all out. Got to go back to basics, uh, and I remember it like yesterday. Probably the change for me, probably the changing point of the season, in terms of getting us back on track. I remember we played Sam Cox right back. Yeah. We played uh, Ben Nunn left back. We we left Ben Martin out and put Josh Hill back in the side. Brought Tyrrell Rod Miller Rodney in midfield. We left Daryl McMahon out and brought Monty back in. 
and we went and won three nil. And uh, it was like four or five changes, which were big changes to leave out Daryl McMahon and, and Ben Martin, who were big characters, as you just said earlier, Luke, and uh, and and Callum. It was, it was big decisions, and uh, in the end, it turned out to be the right decision because that's when we. Re- I felt we really just kicked on after that after that game.